Hello! This is the Red Leg A1 on the Peaceful Glen Homestead, home of the Central Virginia Permaculture Institute. Let's talk rocket mass heaters today. It's Sunday, J January the 7th of 2018. This is the third season that our rocket mass heater has been in service. And I've got videos previously posted and comments and pictures of the entire build through the completion of, con of the construction of the project. Right now I've got on top of the stove there, I've got my supper, which is some leftover. There's some steak in that foil and some cornbread in that one. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to provide you with my own personal review of the system. And uh, let me start off by saying this, that I am totally a proponent of rocket mass heaters. This project that you see here is a DIY project, 100% done by myself. It took me approximately two months start to finish. And the finished product is what you see right here. This is inside of a greenhouse, so there's no way that I would have this uh, particular... If I was in my own house, my wife would never allow this kind of a situation, but it's my greenhouse. And I don't really care what it looks like, just as long as it's functional. I have uh, a thermal exchange mass right here. It's four 55 gallon drums full of water. Eventually they'll be connected to the geothermal system. This heat mass runs basically from the left side of the greenhouse all the way over to the right side of the greenhouse. 13 feet. The thermal mass is uh, close to 38, 40 inches front to back. It stands about 18 inches from the grade, which is at this point just dirt, to the top layer of that brick and block. Now, <clears throat> in a greenhouse, I'm just going to say, I don't think that the, the rocket mass heater that I have constructed is the best solution for this particular greenhouse. Now, having said that, Many of you have rocket mass heaters in, in a greenhouse, and it's, it works just fine. This one works just fine. Um, I wouldn't say that this is the, which by the way, this is the only rocket mass heater I've ever physically seen, constructed. Um, but I wouldn't say that's the most rockety, hottest, fastest flowing uh, that, that I've seen say on uh, the YouTube or other internet channels but I will say this that this barrel is plenty of hot can't keep my hand on it my leftover supper is getting heated up it, essentially what you have is nearly free heat it took me some energy to cut that wood and just, by the way I just got to say this when you're Using wood in a rocket mass heater, your wood needs to be as close to 100% dry as you can possibly get it. Now, you're never going to get a stick of wood to be 100% dry, but whoop, a slip there. But you can get it pretty doggone close. You're going to get the best effect from the driest wood. Don't go out in the woods and cut a piece of wood and you know next week expect to stick it in a rocket mass heater and see it burn you're going to get a lot of smoke <clears throat> i see that that's one of the biggest problems that people have with rocket mass heaters is blowback and smoke coming back into the room i have experienced that and i'm going to tell you why <clears throat> i have some design flaws first let's start off with this the burn chamber the uh, burn tunnel and the J-tube. 
this section of the stove essentially becomes one piece. I have three different materials and all three materials have approximately a six inch diameter chamber. My burn tunnel is probably a little less than six inch and the I have steel pipe on the inside of that barrel which is exactly six inch it's industrial grade steel pipe uh, I chose that because I tried several different other types of material and I had failures uh, the J2 portion of the stove has been rebuilt three or four different times uh, and I document that pretty clearly on previous videos and pictures and so forth but I would go with 8 inch uh, I would I would not build a stove of this size which is 13 roughly 12 and a half feet long including the the thermal mass and I've got eight feet of chimney pipe. My chimney does go uh, at a 45 degree angle outside the building and then 45 degrees up. Uh, I may have too many bins in this particular system but coming out of the J tube and going down into the thermal mass ductwork, that ductwork is eight inches. Uh, I bought that brand spanking new off the shelf and then I transitioned from so I transitioned from six inch to eight inch ductwork back to right there at that 90 degree bend that's a six inch so that stove pipe there galvanized uninsulated stove pipe is six inch pipe all right I think what I've done is I've created some kind of a uh, a back pressure on the system <coughs> I, I'm not sure what it is but there are times that if, especially if it's a windy day I'm reluctant to fire up this uh, rocket mass heater because I will get some kickback some blowback and at times I've had some terrible blowback where I had zero flow going back outside um, I will attribute some of that to some wet wood. I learned that the hard way. And in a greenhouse that's going to create smoke, uh, any kind of blowback, you're going to have smoke. And that smoke in a greenhouse, although you have airflow coming through here from the outside, you know, in the wintertime, you're trying to keep the temperatures down, or excuse me, at night around 50 degrees inside the greenhouse. So, you, you're going to have your holes closed up as much as possible. Therefore, you know, you don't have much escape route for smoke to leave the inside of the greenhouse. And any buildup, it, it's just going to clog up the uh, pores on the backside of your foliage on, on anything you have growing in here. And uh, you're going to kill your plants. So... I could go into much greater detail about the design of this, but I, I document it pretty well. I'm going to say there. Are, I, I think I have three design flaws. I've already described one, and that is a six-inch choking up to eight-inch pipe, and then choking back down to six-inch. I think I've created some kind of a a vacuum type something or other inside that eight-inch pipe. And so I don't get what I consider to be the hottest flow uh, through this system that it, it should be. So that's the number one design flaw there. The next thing is I used cob material, but I also used a construction sand to go into other places that I, I, just, I just couldn't seem to make enough cob fast enough and and I got bored with making cob and and I got rather frustrated with it so I used some uh, mixture of mortar 
and and sand and mud and clay and so forth and so on and then to level things off I use sand and what ended up happening is I've got mice inside this greenhouse <laughs> and the mice have gone in and burrowed into the thermal mass and everywhere they've burrowed in and their sand that sand just flows out at the bottom <clears throat> you can see right here at this this place right here I have mice that travel in and out of there and then <clears throat> back on this back side over here uh, right underneath that um, clean out right there at the bottom I have mice that travel out of there now I've moved a lot of that but I probably got at least uh, a half a five gallon bucket full of material that the mice have uh, excavated out of my thermal mass so I've got some voids in there that I know about not sure how to get to them and fix them maybe I could squirt some kind of I don't know maybe foam or something like that in there and close those gaps up but until I get a cat I'm not sure that I'm gonna get rid of the mice I've tried trapping them and, you know, putting a standard mousetrap out. And Anyway, that's a mess. So what I'm getting at is this. I advocate rocket mass heaters 100%. I, I really love them. I like them. And in this greenhouse, that rocket mass heater works. Currently, with a little bit of help, inside of this greenhouse, it's 54 degrees and I've got that rocket mass heater going now that burn's been going probably for about an hour hour and a half I guess <clears throat> and I want to show you something if you look at that flame you can see that flame licking up and out of the burn chamber that's an absolute no-no that should not be happening and However, if you look down, you can see the, the rockety situation going down there at the bottom. But anytime the flame licks up to the top, there's just not enough flow, not enough draft that's being pulled through the rocket to suck those flames down in there. So that means that there's some, I don't know, maybe the wind is kicked up outside, but although we have a rocket going... I would say it's not the best it could be. It's not 100% because it's allowing some flame to still lick up the side of that um, piece of wood and, and get out here in the open. What that does is that creates uh, exhaust into the room, uh, the greenhouse. And if there was a lot of smoke involved in that, then we would definitely have a problem with dead plants. I've killed my share of dead plant of plants in here. Now I could go I don't know, I could go into other great detail about this, but my review just has to stand with this. Number 1, I don't think the rocket mass heater in a greenhouse is the best option available. And number two, I think the best option available is propane. This is a 10,000 BTU um, wall mount blue, fl blue flame. Uh, that's a 20 pound LP tank. And with that 20 pound tank, I can get 36 hours of burn time on this particular heater without ever touching it. Um, if you come around to, uh, for those of you who really might seriously be interested in this, I'm going to show you some really cool features. Number one is, I've got my hand across the top of this heater, on the very top of it, and it's warm to the touch. It's not till you get right here, just above the, the, the heater, that you really begin to feel the heat. Now, that was... 
I don't know, maybe five seconds. And certainly you would not want a child to come put their hands on this. But what I'm saying is, is I'm, I'm kind of giving a review about this heater as well. I've got heat coming out here. There's no heat. There's warmth on the side of it here and on the side of it here. And that's just standard 20 pound barbecue pit style propane tank. I would say two of those in this greenhouse would be perfect. This one here and the next one I would put would be somewhere over here. I'd have to do some rearranging and moving some things. I might put it on that back wall there just above that that tank. It's a possibility that it could go there and then run my propane line down from the top of the mass all the way to there. So because I have this built, I'm not tearing it up. It was way too much effort to get this thing in place. Uh, but I think that my review is going to stand on its own two feet. I'm happy to have the rocket mass heater, but if I built another greenhouse, of this particular type unless I was absolutely forced to I would not use the rocket mass heater I would have however the thermal mass that you see here and I would have the thermal bank of water in barrels up against the north side of the greenhouse so I have designed this so that I get this is due south, and I get southern penetration of the, the sun rays all the way to the back side. And I do get some thermal mass and uh, transfer, some heat transfer throughout the night. So we're going to go with that. Thank you. Talk to you soon. The Red Leg A1 out here.